When you make a sale to a customer, there are a couple different ways to record that sale. One way is to create what's called a sales receipt. This is almost like point of sale. If a customer comes in, makes a purchase, and gives you the money right then, you can put all of that on one transaction and send them on their way with a receipt. The other way that we're going to talk about in Section 3 is actually invoicing customers, and that's where you send out an invoice and the customer pays you after the fact. But right now, let's focus on sales receipts. Let's flip over to QuickBooks, and I'll show you how to enter a sales receipt. You want to start by going to your customer list. Look down the list and find your customer and the subcustomer that you'd like to send a sales receipt to. If you're using subcustomers, always pick the subcustomer. If you just pick the main customer, what will happen is you'll look at reports and you'll see other and you won't know what that refers to. So just make sure you always choose the subcustomer. Notice when I go all the way to the right here and click the down arrow, I have an option to create a sales receipt. The first thing you'll notice is that it brought in the customer and the subcustomer you chose. If you want to change those, you can actually pick those from the drop down list. The next thing you'll see is a place to put in the email. If you want to email this to more than one email address, notice that you can type them both in here, but just separate them with a comma. And if you need to CC or BCC some additional email addresses, you'll see those here. There's also a checkbox that says send later. That's because you have the ability to set up the sales receipt and not actually send it right now. It could be that you're not really sure of the quantity, but you want to go ahead and get this set up and saved. You could do that. You'll see it brought in the billing address, and it also has the sales receipt date, which would be the current date. If you want to change this date, you can just click the little calendar like I did and change the date. Now in this case, they've customized this sales receipt to have an additional field that says crew number. If you wanted to plug something in there, you would just type in the number for that crew or not use it at all. Now we're going to come back to the payment method in a moment. Let's go down to product slash service. If you click your mouse in the first area there, you'll see that there's a drop down list of all the products and services that you sell your customer. If I go down this list, you'll see there are rocks. These are garden rocks. And if I choose that, it will bring in a description and I can edit that description or add to this as much as I like. I can go over to the quantity and put in how many of these the customer is purchasing and the rate. We'll say we sell these for $25. Notice when I tab through it, it'll do the calculation. Three of these at 25 cost $75. And this is subject to sales tax. Typically physical items are, but services you provide are not. The little trash can that you see at the end would allow you to delete this line. Now let's say I'm going to add one more to this. I'm going to go down and pick a service. Let's say that we have design services and I'll just put this over in the description. And then I'll say the quantity is one and we're going to charge $100 for this. And notice this one is not automatically subject to sales tax. I do have a third line available if I want to put something else in here. If you don't see an available line, Click where it says add lines and that will give you a line to type in. Notice you can also clear out all the lines if you wanted to do that. Right underneath it you have a message that will be displayed on the sales receipt. It currently says thank you for your business and have a great day but you can put anything you like in there. And also if you wanted to put a message and have it displayed on statements you could put that in here and just type it in. Over on the right you'll see it shows us our subtotal. You can see that $75 of it is subject to sales tax. And in this case, they're using a sales tax called California. And it's 8%, $6 in this case. If you want to give your customer a discount, you can give them a percentage discount or a value, meaning a dollar amount. Let's say I want to give them 10%. I'll just type in 10 with a percent sign and notice it deducts 18 cents. And if I scroll down, It'll show me the amount received and the balance due. Now remember, because this is a sales receipt, we're going to put on this the payment amount. They're assuming we've received all of the payment. Back up here is where I can choose the payment method. If they paid me with Visa 
or if they pay me with a check, I can pick any option I like, and there's a little place for a reference number. Now, if you had a Visa card, you wouldn't have a reference number. With a check, that would be a check number. The next thing you'll see is Deposit 2, and it says Undeposited Funds. Your other choices would be to go ahead and deposit this to maybe a checking account, for example. You can see the list. Let me explain Undeposited Funds for just a moment. In your chart of accounts, you will have an account called Undeposited Funds. This is a place where money sits that you've collected, but you have not yet taken to the bank. A customer came in, paid you with a check. You want to show QuickBooks the sales receipt is paid, so you'll choose Deposit 2, Undeposited Funds. But it might be that you're going to collect all the monies you received today and make them all one big deposit. That's when you choose Undeposited Funds. If you knew this was the only thing that was going to be in this deposit, you could choose Checking and skip the next step of making a deposit. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in Undeposited Funds. And when you're finished down the bottom, you'll want to either just save this, or you can choose Save and Send, which will email it, or from the down arrow, you can say Save and Close. We're going to close this, and now that transaction has been completed. You're going to notice when we look at this that Tom Allen, 124 Scottsdale, does not owe us any money. However, if we go over to the All Sales and look here, we should see Tom Allen's sales receipt right here for $180.82, and it says it's paid. Here's where we could go and actually print this. I want to view or edit this. You'll see here that this is your sales receipt where you can make that change if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and get out of this. I'm going to hit the X and cancel it. And that's how you would go in and actually create a sales receipt. That money is now sitting in undeposited funds. I want to take you over to your chart of accounts, which happens to be over here under accounting and show you that account so that you can see the money there. Let's see our chart of accounts. And here's undeposited funds. Now you can see it has $2,243 in there, but if I view the register over here, you'll see the transaction that we did and also, which is right here, any others that were already sitting in undeposited funds. So hold that, and when we talk about making deposits in Section 5, you'll see how this all comes into play. But one way to keep a check on yourself is if you know everything's been deposited, then there shouldn't be any money in undeposited funds. Okay, let's go ahead now and go over into Section 3 and talk about invoicing customers. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free QuickBooks Online Essential Keyboard Shortcuts infographic, click over there. And click over there to watch more QuickBooks videos from Simon Says It.